Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to today's session on AI Center, where we will be talking about the new NER model and the retrainable NER model and how to build your own data extraction engine. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kritika Ravi. I'm a customer machine learning engineer here at UiPath. I work mostly on customer use cases and how to leverage UiPath machine learning solutions for customers. Today's agenda, we're going to start with what exactly is entity extraction model? What is it? What do you do with it? What are some of, some of the example use cases we've come across with customers? And how do we use that in the current scenario of AI Center NER solutions? Where exactly does it fit in in the story of AI Center? And how do you use this new model? What, what use cases have we developed with this? What examples have we come up with? And then we'll move into a live demo. So let's start with what exactly is entity recognition and what exactly is entity extraction. It's a basic task of identifying key information in any piece of text. So let's talk about unstructured text. Let's take an example of a piece of letter or a document like a contract. You want to extract key pieces of information like the contractor name, the loan amount, uh, some of the signature text, the phone numbers, the agent names, and those are all what are called entities. And the, the way we extract these entities and the way we kind of use them is what entity extraction and an entity recognition model does. In the example here, you find that there is an email where we have extracted an agency name, an agency phone number, the address of the agency, and the details from this email. You can define your custom entities and you can train your model to extract these. These are not predefined entities in any way. Some of the example use cases we have come across for named entity recognition models are emails, call transcripts, loan and legal documents, customer reviews, web pages, and letters. We want to extract details like who the email is from, where exactly is this coming, the email coming from, what exactly is listed in these legal documents, uh, where exactly is this entity placed in a web page, things like that. Now, all of this is centered with our AI Center system. And what exactly is AI Center? AI Center is a UiPath solution for managing, deploying, consuming, and improving your model. It's basically a tool which sits within UiPath the ecosystem where you can either use our out-of-box models, you can bring your own model, you can develop and deploy your own models, you can consume it, you can manage it and improve it with that, within AI Center, and then you can consume it with UiPath Studio as an ML skill. It breaks down the barriers between RPA and data science teams, making it easier for you to utilize ML, ML models. So, uh, and from the point of AI Center and ER solutions, we currently have three solutions already deployed within AI Center. We have a pre-chain model, which is currently available to deploy within AI Center, which is trained on about 18 types of named entities already. It can be used as is without having, having to retrain it, without having to go through the labeling process and just be deployed within UiPath Studio. The solution I'm about to discuss is a retrainable model. It's a solution that you can retrain with entities that you, you can specify with your use case. And then you can also build your own model. You can, you can go ahead and use this background solution to build your own model and deploy it with an AI center. So we will talk about the retrainable model in this solution, and then we will go over what exactly is the is the pathway to actually retrain your model, what are the steps you need to take, and then we will walk through a live demo. The retrainable ML model, there, there are a few pathways you can take. The first step of having any retrainable ML model is to collect the data and label the data. So it depends on where your data is coming from. In cases of emails, you will be scrapping emails. 
in cases of loan documents, you will have maybe PDFs of loan documents. For web pages, you will have a set of list of web pages. You will be feeding them into a labeling studio where you will label the said entities. You will define what your entities are going to be. You will label them. You will annotate them. And then as you annotate them, you have created what you call labeled data. This labeled data is what we will consume to actually train our deployable, trainable ML model. Once you train that model, you have an instance of that model, which is trained on said entities and your, on your data set. This model can be deployed, can be analyzed with ML skill for your current use case. In the process of actually being deployed and used, you will, you will kind of find out that your model is performing at a particular accuracy or at a particular level. If you want to further improve your model, we have what we call the action center where you can, where if the confidence level is not high enough, you can pull it into action center. A human can validate and verify the entities. And that human validated data, which is now considered 100% confidence data, can be reused to retrain your model and deploy a newer instance of a model which is improved on more data. So this is the current workflow. Um, again, this the improvement, the consuming, and the deployment of the model all takes place within AI Center. The labeling, the labeling part of it is what is handled by what we call Label Studio, which is a, another platform where you go in to label all your entities and visualize what your um, data looks like. We, let me put an example in front of you for a use case. Let's say we have a use case for an insurance company with an account executive. This is going to be called a smart email automation use case. We are getting thousands of emails which need to be processed, and we need to create a task for each of these emails from partner agencies which come in regarding certain insurance. insurance. And then we have to deploy or we have to detect the said um, insurance company agency names, the phone numbers, the details of it, and then feed it into Salesforce. For a human to be doing that, it takes about an average of six minutes, six minutes or seven minutes for you to actually analyze the email, pull the said, go through the email first, and then pull the required entities from the email. If you deploy a robot with the trainable NER model, it's an average of seven seconds processing time. And with a accuracy of more than 90%. For this solution to be deployed, all you need is the UiPath Studio, the AI Center, Orchestrator, the Robot, and the Action Center. So let's take a closer look at this use case and this example that I just discussed. We start again with scraping the source data, which is going to be emails in this case. We're going to go into Outlook. We're going to scrape all of this existing emails. Let's say we pull up the first 100 to 200 emails. We have to feed it into what we call the label studio and label these uh, emails for the entities that we want to extract. In this case, I want to extract the agency name, the agency phone number, the address line one, the address line two, the city, state, and the zip code to provide to Salesforce. I will then deploy and deploy the ML model with an out of box package with an AI center and then train the model with the data that I just collected from Label Studio. Once I do that, I have it again, instance of a model that is trained on my data. Once we have that, we can produce it, we can deploy it as an ML skill within our business process to, to actually analyze future emails that come in. We set up a we set up a confidence threshold. If maybe the model is not confident on a particular item or a particular email, it will send it to Action Center where we can assign tasks for humans to validate and check on what the model has actually predicted. If the prediction seems to be right, well and good. If not, the human validates it, corrects it, and that data is further collected and can be used again to deploy a newer instance of the model and train it. So this is the current example workflow. This is pretty simple. It's pretty standard for any machine learning use case. And this is how it will look for a trainable NER model. 
let's start with where exactly do we do this labeling and what exactly is labeling? The labeling or annotation, as we call it, is just a way of you teaching the model or defining what your entities are going to be for your model. With Label Studio, you can uh, export your data set with a JSON format, a Cornell data set, a CSV, any of these. But you can you export it with Cornell data set for our trainable NER model. Under Label Studio, you import your data set. The data set can be emails or transcripts, web pages, etc. It translates the said data set into um, a text format where you go in to label it. You define the predefined entities, you define what, what you need to extract, and then go in and label it as a Label Studio instance. Once you export this data, it's pretty simple to just feed it into AI Center. Within AI Center, you have a dashboard where it's the flow is basically data, data labeling, ML package pipelines, ML skills. So you upload your data set, or we will also provide you with a sample data set if you want to try it out. You upload the set data set, you deploy the available out-of-box trainable NER model, then you run a training pipeline for it with your data set, and then deploy it as an ML skill. This is basically the flow of how you will deploy this. And we will go into this for during the demo with a already trained NER model. And then as a business workflow, you will see it in action. So um, here's the demo for an example workflow for the trainable NER model. As I discussed previously, we are going to be analyzing insurance emails that we receive. The email can be a thread, a longer thread than this. But for an example, we have an email from an agency regarding uh, the policy in a PDF format from an account manager here. And we have certain entities we want to extract from this email. So currently, the we have a trained NER model on this instance for certain entities such as agency name, agency phone number, the address of the agency, and then feed it into uh, Salesforce. This is another example of the email, which has another account manager details and the policy attached. Let's walk through how the business workflow actually looks like. We get the emails from the Outlook. As the emails reach the Outlook, we scrape them, we get the text, um, we extract the text out of it and feed it into our machine learning model, which is sitting it as an ML skill within the extract named entities block. Once the entities are extracted, we analyze the each confidence level of these entities. If the confidence level are high enough to our liking, let's say we set it up for 85% in this case, if each entity has a confidence level higher than 85%, it feeds it into Salesforce. Now within Salesforce, this use case calls us to start a task or up update a task for the said agency. Now, if the confidence is not high enough, if it is lower than 85% on any one of these entities, it creates an action center task. An action center is just a platform where humans can validate this data. Once this action center task is created, this task can be assigned to other vendors or other agents to look at. This is basically what we call human validation. Once the human validates the data, it is again fed into Salesforce. But that data is also collected in the backend to be used for retraining. Let's see how this workflow runs. So it currently pulls these two emails that are there in our Outlook. One of these apparently did not pass the confidence level test and it's gone to the action center. Now within action center, you can see that the text of the email is set as the email body um, and all of the named entities are listed out in blocks here. 
as a human, you can go in to verify the value of each of these entities that are extracted, and you can make any changes you need to them as you see fit. If everything look, looks okay, you submit it and the task is finished. Now it goes to the next email, pulls in the second email. Well, it looks like it passed the confidence test. And now both of these have a task listed within Salesforce. Now, if you go into each of these agencies, you can see the entities listed out within Salesforce. Furthermore, uh, we can assign these things to identify if these agencies already are listed and update these entities as they come in. This is just one of the use cases where we had to extract these entities out. If there is a data that doesn't pass the confidence level test, you can re-upload the data within Label Studio to assess that. Once that is done, you have another set of newly labeled data that you can train your model with. As you can see here, there is agency name, address line, zip code predefined in this. So now that, you, now that you've seen the demo, let's talk about what else AI Center offers. We have a lot of already existing pre-trained and trainable models hosted on AI Center. With UI Path's document understanding, we have an invoice and purchase order model, which is very popular. With language analysis, which is where the named entity recognition model sits, we also have a text classification model, a translation model, an existing pre-trained name recognition model, and a sentiment analysis model. For language comprehension, we also have a semantic similarity model, which is very popular. We have an image analysis model and also others. With AI Center, you will be able to deploy, modify, consume all of these with your business workflows. You'll learn a lot, lot about this during our DevCon sessions. You'll learn other people speak about some of these other models. But if you want to learn more about the model that I just talked about, and you want to try it out, this is where you can find the information for it. Thank you 